Hey guys, welcome to my channel iCode. I am Pallav and today we are going to have a look at a very interesting topic that is provisioning profiles and certificates. I understand that as a beginner, it's a real pain. It's very confusing to understand that what are provisioning profiles, what are certificates, why they are used, what they do and how they do, how are profiles linked to certificates, those random errors of code signing and everything else. So today we will deep dive into them, we will see that what is the use of profiles, why they are used, what is the use of certificates, how it is linked to profiles, how they work in sync and everything else. So let's dive in. I believe that before understanding the what part or how part, we must look at the why part. As in, before understanding that what profiles and certificates do or how they do whatever they do, we must understand that why are they needed. So let's look at that first and then we'll understand that how they work. So the first thing that is why and the answer is code signing. Code signing is digitally signing of your code. So whatever source code that you have written for your application, the code signing gives us a confirmation that after this point your code cannot be modified or in other words, it just make it more secure. So assume that you want to send some sensitive information to your friend. You put that information in an envelope and you query it to your friend, but you are afraid about its security, that it does not get compromised, the information do not get changed before it is received. And a simple way to fix this is to put a stamp, to sign the envelope, to put your signature on it, so that whenever the envelope will be received by the other party, by your friend, it will give a sense of confirmation, a sense of security that if the seal is not broken, if your signature, your stamp is not broken, it means that the information has not been compromised. And the same thing is being done by code signing. So your source code is digitally signed to make it more secure. And this is done using provisioning profiles and certificates. So now let's see that what is provisioning profile. As per the Apple's definition, a provisioning profile is a digital entity that uniquely ties developers and their devices to an authorized iPhone development team. And I understand that this is not very clear. So let's see it in detail. The first thing is that unlike Android, iPhone applications cannot run directly on any device. Those devices on which we target to test our applications, to run our applications while development phase, those devices need to be signed by the Apple first or we say that those devices need to be provisioned. Now to do so, provisioning profiles acts as a link between the developer account and the devices. So with your developer account, whatever devices that you have provisioned, the provisioning profile will act as a link between those two. Provisioning profile decides that our app can run on what all devices and what all services it can access. So this relates to the entitlements part that our app is entitled to use what all features, what all services like app groups, push notifications, everything else. So before the IP is made, the profiles are downloaded from the developer account, they are embedded in the bundle and then the bundle is code signed using certificates. So assume that your company, your organization is sending you to attend some conference and the conference organizers want some extra piece of information to verify that you are the authorized person who is here to attend the conference and what part of conference will you be attending and some other relevant information. So along with the other documents, your company will put an extra piece of information having your employee ID, your conference ID or whatever information is required by the organizers that will help them identify that you are the authorized person and they will close the envelope, they will stamp it, they will sign it so that it gives a sense of security that the information has not been changed and this extra piece of information that they have put in the envelope can be treated as provisioning profiles. Now that we have an understanding of what is a provisioning profile and what it does, let's see that what does a provisioning profile contains. So a provisioning profile contains three things, development certificates, unique device identifiers and the app ID. The development certificates authorizes the test devices that we want to run our app on. The unique device identifiers will let the iOS know if this is the designated device on which the app should run. And the app ID helps in identify that whether this particular application is authorized to run on this device or not. So app ID is a two part string which contains the team ID followed by the bundle identifier. So if the app ID that is in our provisioning profile if it contains the bundle identifier of the application that we are trying to run, if the two bundle IDs match, 
then it will allow to install the application otherwise the installation will fail so provisioning profile contains these three things the app id the certificates and the device identifiers now let's see that how does an app run from the xcode what actually happens when we hit command r in our xcode how does the installation process take place Once the build is done, there are no compilation errors, there are a number of checks that are made. The developer certificate that is mentioned in our provisioning profile is matched against the certificate that we are having in our max keychain. If a match is found, that certificate is used to code sign our bundle. Once the code signing happens, the device is checked for its authenticity. So the device on which we are trying to run our application, its UUID is checked against the UUIDs that are mentioned in the provisioning profiles. If this goes well, then the bundle identifier of our application is checked against the bundle identifier mentioned in the app ID that is in the provisioning profile. Once this is done, then the entitlements required by our app are verified against the associated ones with the app ID. If all of these checks are done, if everything goes smooth, then the installation takes place, otherwise the app install fails. And at times you would have seen that your app icon is grayed out. That is because one of these checks fail or we can say that the installation failed. So if you see your app ID, your certificates, the capabilities, the entitlements associated with your app ID and everything else can be checked in the signing and capabilities tab of your export. Now let's see that what are the types of provisioning profiles. There's development, ad hoc, enterprise and the distribution provisioning profile. Now let's see the development first. Development is the most easy to understand provisioning profile and we deal it with almost daily as a part of our development process. So the development provisioning profile contains the list of our test devices on which we want to test our application in our development phase and it cannot be used for distributing our application on test flight or on the app store. The distribution profile does not contain the identifier of any of our devices and it is used to distribute our app to ship it on the app store. So if the distribution profile has been used, then the app can be installed on any device once Apple code signs it. And that happens when we submit our app to the App Store. The other two are used in the development process, but at a later stage. An ad hoc profile is used to distribute our app to a larger audience. The people who are not the part of the Apple developer beta program or their devices are not mentioned in our developer certificates can test our app using the ad hoc profile. So an app that is deployed using ad hoc provisioning profile is very identical to the version that we submit on our app store. As in the app store push notification certificate is used with the ad hoc provisioning profiles and it gives the almost same experience as that of the app store build. Now let's see that how code signing works because we have been discussing about the code signing since the start of the video. Now let's see that how it is done. So one thing that we know is that code signing gives us a sense of confidence, a sense of trust that our source code has not been modified since we have signed it. Now this is done using a public private key pair that Apple has created for us. Or we can say that Apple uses asymmetric cryptography for this purpose. Let's understand it. Sam and John are two friends and they decide to encrypt their chat. To do so, they came with the concept of public and private key. Both of them made a pair of keys, that is public and private key. Sam gave his public key to John and John gave his public key to Sam. Now, when Sam needs to send a message to John, he encrypts the message using John's public key. When John will receive the encrypted message, he will decrypt it using his private key. Same will be done by John. He will decrypt the message using Sam's public key and when Sam will receive it, he will decrypt it using his private key. This concept is called asymmetric So this is the concept of asymmetric cryptography that Apple uses for signing our code. When we request a certificate from the certificate signing authority or that we create the CSR that we'll see it in a moment, the same thing happens. The public key and the private key pair is used for signing our code. Let's see certificate signing request. To get the developer certificate from the Apple, 
we need to create a certificate signing request through our keychain. When we create the certificate signing request, a public private key pair is created on our machine and the public key is embedded in that request that we send to Apple. So basically certificate signing request is a block of encoded text that is having our public key that has been generated from our machine. After the Apple proof the request and we get the certificate, when we double click the certificate to install it in the keychain, it is matched against the private key that was generated at the time of certificate signing request. So when we created the CSR or certificate signing request, we created a pair of public key and the private key. The public key was embedded in the certificate signing request using which the Apple created the certificate. And now when we are trying to install that certificate, it is matched against the private key that we are having in our machine. If the match succeeds, then the certificates will be installed. Otherwise it will not. Now the certificate that we are having in our keychain, it also has a public key given by Apple. So at the time of installation, the private key that is used to sign the bundle is matched against the public key in the certificate. If the match succeeds, the installation happens, otherwise it fails. So this is the whole idea behind the code signing. The public private key or the asymmetric cryptography that is used by Apple for this purpose. So I hope that you have got the concept of provisioning profiles and certificates, like why they are used, what they do and how they do. Why do we get the errors for code signing, for provisioning profiles, identifier not match, etc, etc. And if there are any other doubts, please put them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. So that's pretty much for this video. A new video comes out every Sunday. So do subscribe to my channel. Let's write better code together. Happy coding and stay safe.